a lot of us woke up on Monday morning with news that a tiger in the Bronx Zoo had tested positive for COVID-19. And for so many of us who love their domestic cats, what does that mean? How should, how should we as pet owners be responding to news about the tiger at the Bronx Zoo? I think it's not enormously different than, than the information that we've been getting all along. So we know there were two dogs in Hong Kong uh, who were infected after being in close contact with their owners. Uh, we've heard of a cat in Belgium uh, who was likely uh, exposed to its owner and, and tested positive. We know that there were uh, cats uh, in a research setting who were infected experimentally. Uh, it's really important in that case to recognize that they were experimentally infected with a very high dose challenge um, to the virus. And those cats uh, were actually, we, there's some evidence that the virus was transmitted from the cats who were experimentally infected to cats in adjacent cages who were not experimentally infected. Uh, there's many questions about how that might have happened that we don't have the answers to at this point. Um, so I think the difference and the concern with the, the big cats in the zoo is that uh, we don't know, it, the zoo doesn't know. I spoke with the veterinarian who tested the tiger today um, and we don't know where the exposure came from. None of the zookeepers have been tested and tested positive and none of the staff who was working with those animals had clinical signs of disease. And so it's presumed that it was probably from a staff member who was asymptomatic and just was never aware that they were sick, but we don't know that. Um, what we do know is that probably nobody was snuggling or sleeping uh, with the lions or the tigers. Um, and so there probably wasn't the kind of close contact that we thought was necessary um, to infect our domestic cats. That being said, in New York City right now, we can assume that there are numerous people who are sick with COVID um, we can assume that many of those people have cats and we are not seeing cats flocking to the emergency room in crisis um, from COVID infections. Even the lions and the tigers in the zoo um, are doing much better. They had what we would call probably moderate respiratory disease signs and they're doing much better. So, I think we do know that there is this possibility that humans can infect our, our beautiful cats that we live with every day. We know, I think now, that that is a possibility. We don't have very many instances where we're seeing that be true. We don't have a single instance of that even in the United States. But remember, that's also because we have not done much testing really hardly any testing um, in the United States. There's a tiny little bit of testing in the United States that's been done and the cats have not come back testing positive. Um, and so I think that we're all in this kind of wait and see and let's be so careful and, and let's be so careful about what we say because we don't want people to be panicked because there may be, and I think there probably is not reason to panic at all. Um, there is no sign at all that animals are playing a role in the epidemiology of this disease. When we're seeing the disease travel from one place to the next, we can always trace that to a human having traveled. It's not as though we're thinking, oh my God, a rat jumped off a ship and that's, how it got here, we have no idea. You know, it's, it's really like we're seeing human travel was the thing that associated all of these cases. Um, and so I think 
that we probably don't need to worry on a very large scale about, you know, pets in homes and their owners and all of that. The thing that I think we do need to be very cautious about is that in shelters, we can be a very good breeding ground um, for diseases. And so we need to be on our guard to try to keep the numbers of animals in shelters low. We need to be on our guard to avoid transmission between animals. And we need to protect our staff from uh, interactions and allow them to socially distance with each other and also socially distance with the animals. Scott Weiss in his blog today suggested really including pets in your socially distancing plan. And I think that's a really important thing that not many of us have talked about. So if you're out with your dog, allow your dog to social distance with you. It, you know, I think those are important things to think about. We'll go ahead and put the link to Dr. Scott Weiss's blog in this video so that um, people can read it as well. Well, there Dr. Newberry. In Scott's blog that he does say that the lion and tiger were infected from an asymptomatic staff member at the zoo, but that that is not known at this time. All right. Well, it's it's great that you've had the opportunity to speak directly with the veterinarians involved with the tigers, and I'm sure um, perhaps there's an opportunity to say to share expertise between the zoo world and the companion animal world. So we'll definitely be continuing to monitor the situation, and we'll want to hear from you as you learn more. And again, just thank you so much for your time and willingness to help explain this to all of us. It's definitely concerning and challenging. And, you know, to your point, if we all use an abundance of caution, we can do the very best we can to protect ourselves, protect our families. And of course, the pet is part of the family. So I need to go find out who my one, two, and three backups are who are going to take care of my pets. But I haven't left the house in three weeks. <laughs> and I'm going to try to yeah, and you know, that. one thing I was going to say is that a lot of people are doing that in groups. Um, so people are saying, you know, let's be a group of four people who will support our, each other if this is happening. And so that's certainly an option to consider. Um, and, uh, you know, think about your friends, think about your family and, and see if you're willing to exchange and also you know, trying to make sure that the people you're, you're working with have sort of similar plans at, that you have. That would be great. Um, I know that there have been some uh, kindness cards created, and I think people in neighborhoods can help each other by, you know, just putting a note in the mailbox and saying, do you need help with groceries, pet food? Uh, do you need help with walking your dog? If you're self-isolating, um, you might just need that little bit of extra neighborly love. And of course, I think right now we could all use a little bit of hope and support. And so we, um, we will take your advice and we will continue to get great information out to people. And we need you to take very good care of yourself because you're such an integral part of helping us navigate this. So thank you, Dr. Newberry, for everything you do. Um, every day for animals and by being a part of the leadership that's helping us navigate COVID-19. Stay home, stay safe. You're sort of a national treasure, so we have to make sure that, um, that you're in this with us. So take care of yourself and your family as well. Thank you so much. Right back at you, Catherine. <laughs> Bye.